Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome back to the channel and your first steps into the contact sampler. In this chapter, chapter three, we've so far launched into scripting for the very first time. We've developed a background, thrown it into our instrument and created our performance view using the first callback, the on init callback. Now it's time to push that a little bit further and start creating some controls on our interface. And we're gonna start off with a slider and map it to the volume of our very first group. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at where we left off in the last video. You can always dive back, of course, and check it out if you've missed it. Okay, so we're in our instrument, our Foalon instrument here with our lovely samples that we created. And we just started in the script editor. We created our performance view inside our on init callback and set the height and width of our performance. And when we click on the spanner, we can take a look and see the whole thing there. Really good. So. Back into the spanner now, we want to do some other stuff. At this juncture, it is so important I mention that there is a contact scripting manual. The KSP manual is an absolute lifeline, a great resource, and something you should have on your computer at all times when scripting. You are going to find it probably very hard to memorize all of these commands, all of these functions, all of these callbacks. They're all very interesting, wonderful to work with, and it's great to have these opportunities, but they are not written in English, really. It's not how a human would speak, it's how a computer would speak, and it's something that we have to learn. It's just like any other language. So having a manual is almost like having a dictionary for your coding. So here I am loading up the contact six KSP reference manual. I've been using the contact six version for quite some time now, and it's uh, been around for quite a while, and that's the version that we've been doing everything in. Obviously, if you have been using a different version, use a different KSP manual. Most of the time it's not too different. There are a lot of things that are very similar every time they update because they want most of their instruments to work. There are new features though that are available only in the latest version and some small changes. For example, the background that we made is only available to be a thousand pixels width because Contact 6 accepts that. Beforehand, it wasn't that wide, it was smaller. In here though, for instance, we were looking at doing a slider. We wanna add in a slider. So under chapter four or section four here, We've got all types of UI controls, all these user interface controls. And one of them in here is slider. So we would click on slider. So if I scroll down in this article, you can see the UI slider there, and it's letting you know how to declare it and some examples of how it could be used. Of course, I'm gonna show you now how to use it. So let's dive in back to the contact and take a look. So the first thing I wanna do is on the init, on initialization, I wanna declare a knob. Any of these controls, you're gonna to have to declare them so that they're there on the screen and you wanna do it in on initialization because you want it to be there as soon as you load the instrument. So underneath our initial part of our code, I'm just gonna enter down a couple of times tab in, so I leave a bit of a space and I'm gonna type in declare UI underscore slider. By typing in declare and then UI underscore slider, we're saying declare a slider, but we need to give it a name and a way to be recognized. So I'm gonna space over and I'm gonna type in the dollar sign and I'm gonna type in bells. And bells is just standing for my groups because I want this to be the volume control of the bells group. So the dollar symbol is a integer variable. It's a variable that accepts only integer values or whole numbers. If we actually take a look at the KSP manual here, you'll see that we've got a little bit of a description of what the dollar sign does. It's one of our operators within contact scripting. So you can declare a standard variable or you can declare a particular type of on-screen UI, which we're declaring a slider, and label it as a variable. So that's what I've done here. I've created a UI slider and I've declared it as a variable called bells. That's not all I can do though, is what I need to do now is if I space over and open some brackets, I wanna put the minimum, comma, maximum values that this slider will achieve. Now the minimum and maximum value in contact six is zero, obviously, all the way to a million. Now you can change these values if you want the controller to stop halfway, so you don't want a knob to go over halfway, you might set it to 500,000. So that way, the whole width of the slider only controls half of the values that are possible within that control. Those sorts of things are something that you might experiment with a little bit later. For now though, I definitely wanna put zero to a million and fine tune it later. Let's take a look at this. So if I put zero comma and then one million in there, that has now created the minimum and maximum value. So the full range basically for this slider. Now, if I just hit apply, you'll actually see, oh, there's our slider, but it's definitely in the wrong place. If I go back into the spanner, it's all the way over here and I want it sort of down here next to it. So I'm gonna tap 
the spanner again, I'm gonna come back into our code, I'm gonna go new line tab over, and I'm gonna use a command called move underscore control and underscore pixel. Again, PX because I'm working with pixels, not grid system. A lot of the time you'll have a command and then you'll need to specify what that command is doing inside the brackets. Um, so we can actually see in the KSP manual here, the move underscore control underscore pixels, and what is available or supposed to be in the brackets. So we can see the first value there is gonna be the variable. So we're gonna to need to pop in the variable name. We can see that here, the variable is the name of the UI control. And then the X position and Y position. And because we're using the pixel version, we are in pixels, not in grid. If I scroll up a little bit, you can see this one is the standard one and that's gonna be in grid units, which is not what we're working in. We're definitely working in pixels. So let's dive in, let's open up our brackets and let's go in with the name first. So bells, that's the name of our UI control. So comma that, and then I'm gonna pop in the X position. Now I've already done a little bit of a test, so I think it's about 500 pixels across but obviously you'll need to have a look around and see where it lands and, and move it accordingly. Now I'm gonna comma and I'm gonna put in the Y value and I'm gonna set that to 80 and close the brackets. Let's hit apply and look at this, it's actually come up with an error. Now if we scroll down a little bit, we can actually see what the status of the error is and sometimes this can be helpful. It's saying an end on is expected, but we've already got an end on, so that's actually not the issue of this. What I can see straight away is I've typed in something incorrectly. So if I come in here, fix that spelling mistake, hit apply again, problem solved. It's a great little troubleshooting thing though, that it highlights the line that is the issue. So definitely pay attention to that. And it's definitely gonna let you know when there is an error. And you're gonna get very comfortable and very used to errors. It's something that's just naturally occurring with, with any kind of co coding experience ever. Okay, so let's jump into our spanner and we can see there that it's neatly sitting next to the bells label that I created before. Fantastic, perfectly placed. And if I click and drag this, this is our value. Wonderful. Now the thing is, this value is a pretty continuous thing and I could leave it and set it somewhere, but I want it to make sure that it always stays on this moment. If I turn this up and then I go back in and I hit apply, you can actually see straight away it's brought it back down to zero. So there's one extra step I'm gonna add in. I'm gonna jump in here and I'm gonna pop in make underscore persistent and in brackets, the variable that I want to make persistent. Hit apply there. And now what happens is when I turn that one up and hit apply again, it doesn't change. What we're doing here is making sure that when we set something the way that we like it, when we hit apply, it's not gonna reset to the default. So making it persistent is an important step for most of your controls, unless you want something to reset every time you reload the instrument or apply a new script. Okay, so at the moment we've created our slider, but we haven't actually attached any kind of function to it. It's not doing anything beyond looking beautiful on our interface. Now it's time to use a new type of callback called an on UI control. It's the same as the on init type of control. It's an event that happens. And basically it's saying on UI control, as in on the, the moment where I change something on the UI, we want it to do something. So this is a very handy callback for anything that is on the UI. So sliders, knobs, buttons, you name it, we're gonna be using this type of callback quite a bit. So the callback needs to happen outside of this on init block. So I'm gonna enter down and I'm gonna do a new type of thing. I'm gonna go on UI underscore control. And I'm gonna dive down here and put my end on just so that I know that I've got my enclosed brackets and give myself some space to work. Now I haven't specified here what UI control I want to control. I want to control this slider that's up here. I want this slider to do something. So I need to specify what this callback is actually attached to. So I'm gonna use my open brackets. I'm gonna type in bells and close brackets there. And now it's saying on UI control when this UI element moves, as in when I change this slider, I want it to do something. This is where we add our functions or commands for the UI control so that actually it ties together something. The on init block initializes and declares the slider so it looks right and it stays in the right position and it stays on the right value. But now we actually want to attach some functionality to it. This is where a very important function is going to come into place. Something that you're going to use all the time and see a lot. And that is the set engine par. If we take a look at the manual here, set engine par is a very common, very useful command. 
It has several components though within its brackets. It's got the parameter that you are affecting, the value you wanna update it with, and then the group slot and generic values in there as well. And we're gonna go through each one of these systematically. It does a great job of explaining what to do here. And you can basically go through here and ask yourself a series of questions. And then at the end of each block, you know what number to put in or what value to put in. But let's start off and create one for our slider. So in here, I'm gonna put set underscore engine underscore par and then I'm opening my brackets. The first thing I wanna put in my brackets here is what am I going to affect? I need to affect something. And in this case, what I'm trying to do is affect the volume of my belts. Just to revisit what that is, if I scroll up and go to group editor, let's scroll down here, here is our group editor here. In this bells group, there is a volume control and that is what I'm trying to turn up and down. So let's scroll up a little bit, here we go. We're gonna type in a parameter and the parameter is engine, underscore par underscore volume. Now, if you're not sure where to find these, you can definitely find it in the contact scripting guide. If we take a look in this contact guide right now, here it actually is the engine par volume. And it's saying this is the parameter for any volume within instrument, groups, or bus volume. That's how I'm getting these. So I'm trying to find basically the parameter name that the script uses for the control that I can actually see on the contact surface that I'm, that I'm looking at. What it means is when I'm looking at this volume control, the engine par volume is the name that contact gives that controller. So that's why I put that one in there. And that's gonna change depending on what you're targeting. The next thing I wanna put in is the value that I wanna update this by. This is where we're tying the function of the slider to this knob. We want the value that we put that slider at to be updated into the volume so that as I increase it, the volume dial updates as well. So what we wanted to put in here is bells. That means whatever I drag this slider to, it's gonna spit out a value between zero and a million. And then as it spits out those values, it's gonna update the variable. The variable value is then being used in here. So basically it's saying whatever value this is, make it the value of this engine power volume. Hopefully that makes sense. Essentially what we're doing here is saying, this is the volume control we want and whatever the slider is, make the volume the same. That's what we're essentially doing. The next three sections are a little bit tricky and let's dive back to our contact manual for that. So the first value is group. Is it in a group? And yes, it actually is in a group. We're wanting to affect the volume on one of the groups. Now computers speak numbers a little bit differently to us. They don't count from one for the first thing, they count from zero. So when we're talking about the first group, we're actually talking about group zero. The number for that group is zero. The number for the second group is one. For the third group, it's two and so on. There's always one number behind because it's counting from zero. So when we're talking about the first group of bells, we need to put in zero because that is the first group. Okay, so the next one is the slot. Where is this based in the slot? What it's actually talking about are the instrument effects, the effects slots. And we're not really in an effect slot at the moment. So it just says for all other applications, set this to negative one. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. And actually down here, we're gonna put the same thing as well because we're not in any instrument or send effects outside at an instrument level. We are only in a group, not using any effects. So we're also gonna use negative one for that too. So those last two values there, we're in a group and not an effect. So negative one comma, and we're not at an instrument or send effect slot either, so negative one there. Close that by brackets. There we go, so if we hit apply there, I'm gonna now drag this all the way to the bottom, and when we take a look at our volume, look at that, it's adjusted all the way to the bottom. Let's now change that all the way to the top and come back down and up oh, all the way to the top. Now, the interesting thing about this volume slider is that it goes all the way to plus 12 whereas we really want it to stop at zero. We don't want it to go any higher than zero. This is where the minimum and maximum values from earlier, which, which we set when we were declaring our slider, this is where they come into play. So zero volume is around here. It's sort of about 60% of the way round. So what we can do is try and replace this maximum value with say 600,000. If we apply that, move that to the top, and then see how far it's moved. Oh, we could probably go a little bit higher. So this is where we wanna kind of keep stretching it around until we find something that works. I'm gonna leave it about 650,000. It's kind of close enough. That'll do for now, but we would keep working it out. This is a great time to mention that forums can be a huge helping hand as well. If you are stuck on any kind of scripting issue, 
I've definitely used online forums as a way of kind of resolving that. Not necessarily even posting anything, there is usually someone who's asked the question before. So someone's probably asked before, what is the best number to put as your maximum when you're using volume? And I, I can assure you it's there. So if you have any questions at all on any of the scripting stuff, Google it because there's likely someone who's asked it before and you can just piggyback on that. Okay, so now when we go back to our interface, we now have a bells amount. If I take this all the way down and play, absolutely no bell sound. Now I turn this all the way to the top and We now have the bells working. We have a working volume control, which is super exciting. There we go. We have our first control that is being put onto our interface that's now controlling the first group's volume. And you can follow the same process for the other groups as well. All you need to do is use the same sort of functions and the same declarations in your on init block as well. And just move those sliders down and around using the different pixel values to line them up with the labels. Sliders are a really quick, easy way to make controls for your UI interface. They're actually super helpful because in the future, if you ever get into contact custom graphics, they'll be very useful at that point too. For the next video though, we are gonna check out knobs because those are a very useful addition as well. They actually allow you to add values and titles. So they actually are very helpful controls as well. And you may want to use those in your next library. So subscribe and ding that bell so you get notified when that video lands and I will catch you in the next one.